Thanks for watching! If you like this video, be sure to read The Tale of the Order of the Blue Maiden. It's a high-flying adventure! Available now on Amazon, iTunes, Barnes & Nobles, and Kobo. You've never heard a tale like this! Lord Zerus! Lord Zerus! Lord Zerus! Lord Zerus! Lord Zerus! Lord Zerus! Why, hello there! I'm Lord Zerus, and welcome... to my boudoir. I'm afraid that you've caught me lounging in my undergarments, contemplating the latest addition to my wardrobe. There's no question that we in the medieval reenactment community like it kinda rough, and that, being as it is, requires us to occasionally refresh our wardrobe. As I can show you, it takes a beating every now and again. That's why I had to order some special clothing. And I ordered it from my friends over at Quilted Armor, which you can find on Facebook. My point of contact for this purchase was Yefimova Natalia. At the time of the filming of this video and of this purchase, uh, which was, I believe, in October of 2021, that uh, Yefimova and Quilted Armor were based in Moscow. Now, according to Yefimova's Facebook page, because of the conflict in Ukraine, she and her family have since made the difficult decision of relocating to Serbia, where she has re-established her business and continues to make gamisons to this day. I can't imagine how difficult it must have been to make that decision to just uproot her entire life and move her business uh, to a different country, or how painful that conflict must be for her because she herself is Ukrainian and her husband is Russian. So I, I really just can't imagine living through that nightmare. So my thoughts go out to her and I wish her the best. But she appears to be flourishing in this new setting, so that's great. When I made this purchase, Yefimova did provide excellent customer service. However, there were a couple of miscommunications. Hi. I won't call them problems because they're not problems. They're just, you know, things that happen, really. And also, pair that with the fact that I made a couple of, uh, shall we say, uh, rash decisions, made the order come out not exactly the way I planned. The first thing that happened is that I kind of made an impulse decision to buy chainmail voiders and a chainmail skirt. As you can see, the chainmail voiders are not present. You know, after thinking about it for a while, I realized, hey, this is going to be such a nice garment, I would like to wash this thing every once in a while. And you can't do that when you have chainmail on it. So I told them to, you know what, send me the voiders separately, and I'll find a way to attach them and make them removable. It's a chainmail skirt. Might be a little on the big side. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. Therefore, that'll probably be the subject of another video. A nice little surprise that came in the package. Some kind of little Russian candy. I don't know what this says. This is Magaba Chaka Nergamrak. This is really good. It's like a Russian Pop-Tart filled with uh, mm, elderberries. Because I don't really have time to do that right now because we're still trying to get ready for Great Western War. Yes, I'm still getting ready for that. I know. I know, it was months ago, and I'm still getting ready for it. I'm working on it, okay? Another issue that occurred is that I uh, initially wanted this print to be in gold on the black parts of the gamison. I also decided that I also wanted black print on the white parts. However, because of the uh, language barrier, uh, there was a slight miscommunication. They thought that I only wanted the black print. But that wasn't their fault, that was kind of my fault for changing my mind and then not making myself clear. So after the garment was sewn, they didn't want to go back and add the print because, well, this has a lot of texture on it. Uh, if you try to print on this, uh, there'll be gaps in the print. They didn't want to make a product that wasn't up to their standards. So I can understand. So the way I'm going to compensate for that is that I got my own little printing block and I'm going to print my own pattern on here. The third issue is that I completely neglected to ask them if they could add arming points to this garment. Uh, which would have been a good idea because uh, I completely reworked my arm harness and now the arms are no longer attached to my gorget. Uh, hanging your arms from your gorget is probably a bad idea. If your gorget is attached to your arms, you could very easily clothesline yourself. Well, you saw how I eventually rigged my arms so that it was attached via a system of straps and flaps. Uh, that that's kind of a cool name. It sounds like a name of a board game. We in the game of straps and flaps. But anyway, I undid all of that. So now uh, the arms have to be pointed to the gamison. At least that's what I'm planning on. You know, it kind of sucks that I don't really have time to experiment with that a whole lot before heading out to Great Western War. We're kind of going to have to do a quick job of adding army points to this new gamison uh, so that uh, I can use my arms in combat. Because if I don't, this will all have been for nothing. And also, I'm going to have to repeat the process for my other gamison here because I still use this gamison for, you know, for different reasons. For reasons, okay? Reasons. All right, well, I think that's enough talk, don't you? 
I think now what I need to do is try this beauty on and see where the arms land on the garment so I know where to put the army points. All right? Ah. Ah, ah, ah. No peeking. Oh, yeah. Hey, you like it. This is the absolute bleeding edge of mid 14th century combat fashion. This suits me just fine. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Got your tickets to the gun show? Because, little known fact, that the reason we call our arms guns is because armor arms actually used to be called cannons because of the shape. I don't know, somebody told me that. I don't know if that's really true or not. Well, let's slip one of these on, shall we? Uh, uh, I'm stuck. Okay, so I got my arm on, and uh, I got my white pencil here, so I can just make some very faint marks at the top of this. In my experience, when you want to hang armor, especially off of a garment, uh, you gotta hang it a little higher than where you want it to land, because gravity's gonna do some work on it. It's gonna pull it down, and the garments might stretch a little bit or it's gonna settle into place. And, and if you put it exactly where you want it, you're gonna find that you know, you're riding a little bit too low because of gravity. In order to compensate, you gotta go a little bit higher. Threading them's going to be a challenge, especially if I ever have to do it by myself. Fortunately, I have the lovely Lady Seistine to assist me in such matters. But uh, if I'm never by myself, you know, doing this stuff is a real challenge. In any case, before we can sew anything to the Gamson, we have to do the block printing. We don't want to create areas where we can't print because, you know, there's some kind of feature in our way. So the block printing should come first. Look at this. Isn't this thing beautiful? I ordered this amazing piece from Tie-Dye Travels on Etsy. And it was relatively inexpensive too. I mean, it was about 30 $31, $32. It's an amazing piece of work. It's gorgeous. It looks like it could have been carved by a computer-driven lady. The pattern is very precise, uh, but that doesn't make it any less beautiful. This thing even has beautiful layers. It, it looks like a tiramisu. It just, it looks delicious. I want to put it in my mouth and chew on it, but it does smell kind of nasty. It smells like, a, like, you know, chemicals and oil and, and weird tree bark. And by the way, if you are in the SEA and you're from Kaid, Tide Travels has the Kaid Kingdom symbol in stock on their store. All right, so you can see I got my block print here. I got my drip pan. Uh, I've got my Stuart samples, gold is gold. I've got just a little bit of water for thinning. I've got a sample piece of material here that I'm gonna do a test on, all right? And I've got a little paintbrush just for in case of flies, as my mother used to say. It sounded a lot more folksy and interesting in Spanish. Uh, than it does in English. So, anyway, I think these gauntlets aren't going to cut it. So, uh, equip workies! Okay, you know what? I actually don't even think these are gonna cut it for this job. Equip rubbers! Okay, that's better. That'll come in handy when we have to do needlework later on. Oh, grr, got a little bit of spooge on there. Relax. It's glue, okay? Relax. So, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run a little test and to see how well Stuart Simple's Gold is gold uh, will actually print on material like this. Uh, this will be kind of tricky. Oh, okay, that's a lot. That's a lot of paint. Kind of want to shake our paint around. Might end up using most of this bottle, to be perfectly honest. I gotta use, I gotta use this to to move it around the surface here. All right, so here comes our first test. Probably a good idea also to just, you know places where where the paint doesn't reach to apply it directly to the uh to the thing here i don't want to don't want to rub it in or anything like that just want to like press it lightly okay looks a little bit incomplete you know what yep that's what i thought there's a big old hole right underneath there i'm gonna try it again over here in the on the solid part of the table we're gonna need a lot of paint for this. It'll work, but we gotta work for it. All right, so I've got this quadrant of the gamison taped off. So yeah, okay, this is terrifying. You know, the only way to do it is to do it. Just got a little bit of water here to thin this paint. Hopefully it'll be enough to cover, you know, both quadrants on both sides. Although I have my doubts. Oh, too much water. All right, wish me luck. You see, it's kind of dripping everywhere. 
Uh, I fucked it up already. No, can't say that it really worked. There really is a technique to this, isn't there? And I don't know it. I don't know what it is. It's probably don't use gloopy paint. Yep, that looks terrible. I ruined this. But you know what? That's my mistake to make. And as I always say, don't be afraid to suck. Let's just try it again. Maybe I pressed a little bit too hard that time. A little bit better. You know what would help is if I kept my line straight. I'm doing a terrible job all around. Well, now this is a good candidate for Roast My SEA Kit. All right, so I think what I'm gonna be doing is applying this with a brush from now on. First, I'm gonna dig in there because that is what's screwing me up. Sorry if I'm not showing this to you. I'm just kind of wrapped up in my own problems right now. Not thinking about the show too much. I might have to cancel the show after this. Or rename, rebrand is a Lord Zerus' bad advice. Now I'm using the brush to do light applications so I don't end up with all the goop inside the grooves. Okay, well, it's looking a little nicer. It's a little bit more subtle, maybe a little too subtle. And of course, it doesn't help that it's completely crooked. I think Yefimova is gonna be furious with me. Okay, I'll buy that for a dollar. I did water this down too much. Oh God, this stuff comes out so fast. You know, maybe what I need is a roller. Ah, oh, Zerus, what have you done to yourself? Should we reapply this one? He's probably a terrible idea, but it's a little blurrier now, but at least it's uh, got nicer color. Try not to repeat that mistake, okay? Part of the gamut is transparent right now. I'm using a blue screen, and I'm also using blue tape. That's that was a that was brilliant. Um, this is going not terrible, not bad. I'm not hating it. This will be a little bit more straightforward, I think. I'm not sure if this is necessarily helping. I don't think the wood's gonna reabsorb the paint, right? That's uh, a little weak sauce. Oh, that's kind of pretty. It's a really nice pattern if you really squint at it. It's a little sloppy, but it's shiny. And if something's shiny enough, then you can overlook its flaws. Kind of cheating here in this part of the sleeve. Even if you look at, you know, their original work, the pattern kind of stops at the seams. But of course, their patterns are very nice and orderly. So, it, you know, it does a better job of tricking the eye than my slapdash job here. We got our first, like, really decent looking print here. And I think the reason is because the paint is kind of drying up. Wow. Okay, these are starting to look really pretty. It's too bad that didn't happen on the front, huh? Maybe we should have started on the back and worked our way to the front. Alright guys, so it's time to start talking about army points. I am in a slightly less messable up part of my castle, alright? And I've got the whole punching tool. Uh, you know, you can get that at any leather working store. I think I got this at Tandy Leather. These are gonna be my army points, alright? Now I've got a big piece of leather here. There are two different colors. One is for the black side, one is for the natural color side, which is what we're calling the white side, okay? So what I've done here is that I've taped these two pieces together because this part is going to go on the inside of the garment. And then this part is going to go on the outside of the garment. So this is going to be holding our, our arming ties. And then the inside leather is just like a little shield buffer for the fabric on the inside of the garment. It doesn't need to be the same size. It just needs to be there to, you know, structurally hold the thread in place. Speaking of thread, we're going to be using this Kevlar thread. This is kind of pricey. Uh, I don't know if you necessarily have to use this. I believe wax thread also works just as fine. But this Kevlar thread, I think I picked this up again at Tandy Leather. I think this was a $50 spool. So yeah, this stuff is not messing around. I'm just gonna put that aside for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch holes in this. This black one kind of looks a little weird because I'm actually using two pieces of black leather tied together. Eventually these are gonna be sewn together and then the garment is gonna be in between these two pieces. All right, so I have to put some more tape to stabilize this because I don't want them sliding around as I'm punching the holes. I'm just gonna come in from both sides just to make sure we get a hole there. So I've already messed this up. Great, awesome, awesome work. Ah, there'll be some extra holes in it, but that's fine. So you get the idea. I'm gonna work my way across both of these and then I'll start pinching in the larger holes. All right, so uh, I punched all my holes here. Uh, you saw I kind of messed up here and uh, I started messing up again here in the middle too, but you know what, that's fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that got our holes. The holes match up. So uh, we got our white strip, which is going to go on our left side. So I've got my left arm here. And uh, the only thing we really need to do is to draw through these holes. This part doesn't really matter as much. I'm just really doing this for reference.
Okay, so I've made my marks here. I gotta make sure I punch the holes before I take the tape off. Punching these holes is kind of pain in the butt. I gotta do it on the ground. I will see you on the ground. I apologize, everything's kind of a mess right now. As I've been saying, I've been really busy trying to get ready for Great Western War. Gotten about 90% of everything I intended to done. It's just this one thing, which has been hanging over my head this whole time. It should be easy enough. The only problem is that uh, once it comes time to sewing this to the garment, that's gonna be kind of time consuming because these are a lot of stitches to do. I don't know why I'm agonizing over this. Okay, it's not centered. Of course, I don't want it too close to the stitches because then it's gonna be too hard to, to insert the tie that we're gonna use, which will probably be, end up being paracord. Oh uh, yeah, here, I might be going through multiple layers here. Okay, that wasn't too hard. Ugh, I hope this isn't making too big of a racket. Because it is right now, it's like four in the morning. Fortunately, I'm almost done and this is the most noisy part of it. it doesn't involve any power tools or anything like that. It's just this hammer. Okay, last one, uh, all done. Honestly, this might even be overkill for what I'm doing, but uh, you know, I really want it to be securely on there. All right, well, all that's left is to sew this onto the gamison using that Kevlar thread. Don't know if I'll have time to do it before war, so we'll see, guys. Okay, guys, as I predicted, I did not have time to finish this project, and uh, I am now in a hotel in Castaic. Where the heck are we? Tahone. In Tahone. It's the night before we, well, the night before we are going to Great Western War, because it already started on what, like Monday? I did some sewing in the car, so you can take a look. See, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful stitch? I was doing it in the car, but I had to stop because I stabbed myself a couple times. And they say, uh, what does the saying go? It's not a costume until you bleed in the seams. Out of respect, though, for what we're doing here, this is not a costume. This is a garrison. Totally a costume. Moving on. There's our piece of leather on the inside. And then here it is on the outside, right? So we're just kind of going in and out. I had a really good joke yesterday and I never said it. Had something to do with uh, leather work or costuming or sewing or something. And I said, you know, the best leather work is just like the best lovemaking. It's just the least effort possible. Terrible. I know. <laughs> it's an inten it was an intentionally terrible joke. Anyway, by the way, what I've done, I've threaded my needle with the um, Kevlar thread, okay? I've tied a knot here on the end. So that helps it not go through the fabric, but uh, Fortunately, the knot's not big enough to not go through the um, the leather here. Actually, I, I do need to start on the inside so that we keep the knot work hidden from view. All right, so I'm gonna go in to this hole here where I left off. So I'm coming up, bringing out like that. Ooh, oh. All right. So I don't want to go. I don't want to pull it all the way because I still want to have some of this visible when I when I go back in. Okay. So then I'm gonna go on the next one here. Always be mindful of your leather. Keep it straight because that's, uh, if you start sewing crooked, you gotta have to cut your whole thread off and start over again. Oh, we got it in. There, lucky shot. The needle just went in there. Pull through. Uh, oh, the reason I still wanted this back here is so that I could take this, this loop here, and, th and thread it through like that. So now I'm gonna go back up top and then pull, pull this so it's all the way tight. One of the reasons I, I went ahead and doubled up on the thread is really Lady Sastine's idea. I mean, she's way better at this than I am. It's so that, you know, I could go just do one pass of the needle and have two threads on there already. I do two passes on each hole. Now I've got a total of four threads on there, all right? So that's a collectively a lot stronger than just, you know, doing one I'll pass one at a time. I don't want to destroy the fabric underneath. I don't want to poke it full of holes. Although, I mean, linen is typically a very porous fabric, so I don't think I'm damaging it too badly. So I've only got two threads there, so I'm gonna go back one more time. Like I see, now I feel like this hole's, this hole's kind of getting tired. Now I have to go back in this one again, and then once I come out of this one, because I've already gone over this one too, twice, I'm gonna go on to the next one. Oh yeah, you wanna pull your seams tight, okay? Because if you don't, if you get some slack in here, it's gonna be impossible to go back and, and re-pull those, so make sure they're tight before you move on. And the hardest thing about this really is finding the holes and keeping everything straight, because as always, you're fighting gravity. Doing this in the car was a real challenge. Oh no. Oh, see what happened there? My strap got cut under my thread. You gotta be very careful about that. So I'm gonna pull that tight. There we go. It's 
kind of a guessing game to see where the hole is. And you also want to be careful not to stab your own hand. Okay guys, well I think you get the idea. You just keep doing this until you finished. End of video. Bye. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll check in with you when I have something more interesting to show you. Because this is just, this is going to take forever. Okay, and then we just pull it, pull it tight, pull it tight, pull it tight. Hey guys, this is me, Lord Series. I finally made it to Great Muscle Bar. Check me out. How do I look? Everything's all tied in and buttoned up. And I'm ready to hit the fan. I'm actually a couple hours late because I've been on the toilet all morning. Because we did a little bit too much drinking last night. Anyway, alright, I'll see you out there. Come on, let's go. Okay, everybody. Well, we fought hard, and now it's time to party hard. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget our motto, no le timere otsuji, don't be afraid to suck. And I'll see you on the battlefield. Oh. Hey, give me some of that for me. Ah.